Hi boys and girls, today we are going to make the adorably cute, unbothered capybara that is all over the movie Encanto. This little guy is the world's biggest rodent and they are found in the Amazon, which is perfect for our rainforest theme. So we're gonna go ahead and make some capybaras today. The first thing you're going to need is a brown piece of paper and a pencil, or you can just go for it in a washable black marker if you wanna be risky like me. The first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna start at the top left corner of our paper going horizontal. We're gonna start with the head of our capybara, which is essentially a rounded rectangle that just doesn't connect all the way. So I'm going to start up here in the top left corner. I'm gonna scooch in a little bit, maybe like a hand's length. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal line almost to the edge of my paper. It's okay if it's a little bumpy and imperfect. Do not even worry about it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a vertical line that is, again, about a hand's length for my capybara's face. Okay, nice and round. Now I'm gonna bring this line in again, almost lined up with the first line. And I'm just rounding off the edge a little bit. Great job. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my capybara's ears. They kind of look like a football shape that is just not connected at the bottom. So I'm gonna leave about two fingers of space for my ear, going down, curving to a point and bringing it back down. You can also make another ear that does something called overlapping where I'm gonna curve up and then I'm gonna bring the line down and just have it bump right into that first line. While I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a football or an oval on the inside for the inside of the ear. Great job. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna to start to draw the neck of my capybara and I like to air draw with my finger first. I'm gonna kind of bring a line that goes down, almost like a slide, a little bit of a curve, kind of lined up to where my first one line was for my chin of my capybara. Okay. While we're here, let's go ahead and make our capybara's eyes. One of my favorite things about them is they just look so chill, not frazzled, and I just keep calling them unbothered. Let's go ahead and add the eyes. We can make them pretty big and we're gonna line them up around right underneath the ears. I'm gonna start by making a nice big rainbow. And then I'm going to draw a straight line. I made it go back a little bit, kind of like an eyelash. And then underneath, I'm gonna go ahead and make a smiley face that connects. And let's add his pupil. So I'm gonna draw another curved line smiley face. And I'm gonna leave just a little section empty for the shine in his eye or her eye. <laughs> Look at that. Cracks me up. The next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and do the nostril here. It's like an upside down raindrop. If it's easier for you to flip your paper over to draw this upside down raindrop, you can, or you can follow along with me. So I'm gonna scooch my line down. The pointy part is gonna be down here. I'm gonna go up, curve around, and connect kind of on a diagonal. Okay, I'm gonna take my marker while I'm here and I'm just gonna go ahead and color in those lines. All right, looking good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line that comes down for the chest and I can make this line a little zigzaggy if I want to or I can just draw it kind of curved and straight. And I wanna leave room for the legs 
um, laying down. If you decide, if you have enough room and you want to make your coffee bar, coffee bar standing, like my guy here, um, you can do that as well. But I'm going to demonstrate how to make him laying down. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do the coffee bar's back. If you look at my example here, we're gonna draw a line that goes horizontal and then starts to curve right around where the tush is gonna be. Let's go ahead and do it now. If you're always nervous, I always recommend drawing with your finger first and then just try with your marker or your pencil. Go over and start to just curve slightly. I'm gonna hit pause on that area, and now I'm gonna go down and do the legs. So, cubby bars don't have big legs, they don't, they're not very long. Um, we wanna make sure they're not too thin. So what I'm gonna do to start is I'm gonna draw a line that kinda comes down and then out, kinda like a little L there. And then I'm gonna follow it with another parallel line. But I wanna leave some room, I wanna make sure my leg is at least two or three fingers wide. So I'm going down and I'm gonna follow this line and there's one of the legs and now I'm gonna make the toes. Capybaras have little toes, they're kind of funny, little nails. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three, or four, however many bumps you want. Little toes, looking good. And now I'm gonna skip the belly for a second and I'm gonna do the back leg. So a lot of times when animals are sitting or laying down, especially dogs and cats, the top part of their leg kind of comes up and it kind of looks like an oval or half of a heart. Um, and so we're gonna make this shape now. So right around this back area here, not quite up to the back, not too far down, somewhere right around here and from where we started to curve, I'm gonna go ahead and draw kind of like half of a heart shape. So I'm gonna start down low, curve up, come down, and then I'm gonna leave some space for the bottom of the leg. This can be a little bit tricky for some friends, so watch me. At the bottom of this heart shape, I'm gonna go out. Okay, and now let's just do this. Let's go ahead and do one, two, three little toes. That should make us about three or four fingers thick, just like the front leg. <clears throat> I'm gonna go out, kind of around where I stopped for my heart. And then I'm just gonna make a little curve kind of going up there. So that is his back leg. We can connect the line here for the belly. There's some overlapping going on. We cannot see the whole belly. So we're just gonna draw what we can see. Now this back section is the rump. So we're gonna go ahead and go down and we're gonna add a little bit of a tail and then just connect it. Down curve out a little bit and connect. All right, if you wanna add another leg, cause if our capybara is laying down, we might be able to see the other front leg. The other back leg would be on the other side, we would not be able to see it. So I'm just gonna draw a double line a little bit above the first leg and maybe like a toe or so. And now it looks like we can see part of the other leg on the other side. <clears throat> Let's add some texture. So coffee bars do have kind of whiskers. I'm using the skinny side of my marker for some whiskers there. And I'm just kind of drawing a few little short lines kind of all over. <clears throat> Maybe some on his back. This is another way to make our coffee bar look a little more three dimensional by curving these lines. They also have those little fingernails, like I was saying, so we can fill those in if you'd like to. Okay. Super cute. Now let's add some color. Either oil pastels or construction paper crayons. Either one works. Let's start adding some details. So I'm gonna start by adding some white for the eyes. I'm gonna color underneath. The white part here, 
thick and thirsty, I can do that little white reflection as well. I added a little shine on the eyelid just because I thought it looked kind of cute. And then I'm also gonna just add a little bit more fur and texture with the white as well. So we want it to look like this guy is made, um, is furry, and if we just left the brown paper brown, it wouldn't look, uh, just solid, it wouldn't look like there was any texture or fur, okay? We can actually use any other colors we would like to. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some other browns here. This is how artists kind of make things look more realistic. You can add some shading if you would like to. So I'm just kind of filling in some more areas. If I want this back leg to look a little darker, I can go ahead and shade that in brown. Maybe I'll even add another color to make it even darker. Looking pretty good. I might even add a little shadow on the eyes, making it a little darker around the edges, then pressing lighter. Look at that. It kind of looks like it really is more three-dimensional. It's always a good idea to roll your sleeves up with oil pastels because they are they can totally smear. Let's go ahead and add some color to the inside of the ear here. You guys don't have to do yours looking just like mine. You can feel free to uh, make them a little bit different. I love mixing and blending with oil pastels. It is super fun. Maybe I'll even add some of this gold color for some texture. Ooh, yeah, yeah. But notice I'm not coloring anything in solid other than the areas that are supposed to be more in shadow. I'm just kind of drawing either zigzag lines or short little lines to show the texture of our animal here. If this was a snake or a dolphin, we would definitely be drawing this with a different type of line, different elements of art skills to make it look um, more realistic. Okay, oops, alrighty. Looking really good. All right, the last step here is we're gonna go ahead and cut them out. I like to add violet for shadows instead of black. I think it makes it look a little bit richer. Oh yeah. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut this little dude out. We are going to take our scissors, thumb in the small hole, Three fingers in the big hole there. And I'm gonna start by cutting away from myself. We wanna leave that nice thick black outline. Um, I just think it makes it look nice and fun. I'm gonna turn my paper so that I'm always cutting away from myself. If you find yourself getting frustrated in a corner, stop what you're doing. Cut off what you don't need. It's always easier to cut in instead of fighting with those corners. So you're gonna see me turning this little guy around a bunch of times so that it's always comfortable for me. Okay, cut this off if you need to. All right, he is done. Oopsies, I forgot a couple little toes here. Cut in, cut in. All right, please throw away your scraps when you're all finished. And then make sure you write your name in a pencil on the back as well as your class code, whatever your class code is. Okay, great job.